looks good, but I can't get the battery out. Oh. Yes. Mm. Hello and welcome to another day on Cornwall Pocket Farm, where I try and figure out how to live sustainably on 300 square meters in the city. So I have this great idea, one of my brainwaves, I have a lot of brainwaves, great idea that I should do some videos on this channel about green building. I used to work for the New Zealand Green Building Council and I worked with some amazing people who were so knowledgeable in this area and it was, I learned a lot and it was really useful. When I was doing this renovation, to, to have that knowledge, to be able to talk to builders um, from an informed place really and, and to know what I wanted to achieve and how to achieve it, that was so useful. So I thought I'd do a few videos on the, the basic principles of green building, the 101 if you like. So not getting into all the jargon and the detail and all that sort of thing. You can, you can go online and find out that stuff later if you're interested. But just the basic principles, I thought, might be quite useful to cover on this channel. So that's what I'm going to do. So I tried to film it in the conservatory the other day and it really didn't work, which is why you've not seen it on this channel yet. Um, yeah, the lighting was wrong, the background was wrong, it just didn't work. Just three things that you need in a home and the way they work together is really important. So I thought, okay, I need, to, I need to up my game. I need to be better at this. So I need to upgrade my equipment and I also need to find a good place to do the filming, a sort of a little mini YouTube studio, if you like. So the first thing is to upgrade the camera. G7, a Lumix G7 DSLR. So lots and lots to learn, but um, I bought a really cheap tripod uh, when I started doing the YouTube videos. So I have the tripod and uh, now I have the camera. And uh, yeah, and I have an old microphone um, that I'm hoping will fit that I had from years ago when I did a, a little bit of video work for a, a client. I'll have to do some experimentation and play with the settings and, uh, ooh, uh, it zooms, very cool. <laughs> I have to admit that um, I left the research to uh, my tech department, otherwise known as the husband, um, because I, I find these things very uh, exhausting and uh, I'm not very good at endlessly searching on the internet, it does my head in to be perfectly honest. Weirdly enough, I actually get seasick I get, if I'm doing the scrolling thing. Not that you need to know that, but anyway, if I scroll endlessly, I get like reverse seasick, so I can't do it very often, whereas the husband is awesome at finding things. So I gave him my requirements, which was an external mic, microphone jack, which I've got to find yet, a flip screen, which turned around so I could see what I was doing, and I wanted a DSLR that wasn't the most like enormous beast in the world. And this looks really good. I think he did all the reviews and said that this one was a great one. And we got it for a, a nice price on Trade Me. So I'm um, very pleased. And there's supposed to, oh, there's two batteries. So there must be a battery in there. 
and then there's one on the battery, uh, on the charging thing as well. And the gentleman very, I think it was a gentleman, I don't know, the person who sold it to me very kindly threw in um, an SD card. So essentially I'm um, good to play with it tonight. Hmm. What I must do actually, <laughs> see if there's a manual on the internet. Because I can't seem to get that out. There must be, yeah. Definitely, I'll set the husband onto this tonight. Instructions. What we need is some instructions, I think. Yeah. I do like a good instruction booklet. I must admit, I'm the sort of person that reads the booklet, comes to cover, and then starts. Yeah. That looks good, but I can't get the battery out. Oh. Yes. Mm. Mm. yes. Definitely need the booklet, I think. And uh, the other thing that I did was I tried to figure out where I was going to do these videos because obviously the conservatory wasn't working and I figured out I needed two key things. So I need good light and the other thing is that I need somewhere that is not going to be interrupted. Um, since the pandemic, the husband works from home most of the time now, which, which is great, but it does mean that at any minute he could walk out and go make a cup of coffee or he's on the phone a lot so in the back of my video sometimes you'll hear him talking so I don't want that so it needs to be somewhere that's sort of secluded and not in the way and also with good light. This didn't really work. The lounge is full of couches so there was nowhere to film in front of the windows and the only other place is the bedroom, but I didn't really think it was the right vibe to be sitting on my bed. That's the only way I can get to the light. So that leaves one room, which is my sewing room. And my sewing room is small, very small. But I think I figured out how to make it work. So come along with me and I'll show you the space I've got to work with. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's my mannequin, my cutting table, all my sewing stuff, the sewing equipment everywhere. That's a, an ironing board in, in this, this cabinet. Here's an ironing board. And if I turn around, there's the conservatory out there. If I turn around, you'll see on this side, I've got all my books, sewing books, and then fabric and blocks and stuff. But... If I close this door, you can see, what I can see, is a bit of space. Now, I will have to lock myself in <laughs> to do a video, but I figure if I sort of go into this corner like this, I could do a video in this space. Okay, so the next piece is to make my YouTube studio look attractive. It's really boring at the moment. It's just some old shelves with some stuff on it and a door, obviously. And, and I've got my little man here. This, this little man actually just stops the door handle banging into the cabinet. I also need to dust. I think I need a plant. Definitely. Where's that going to go? Found this under a house that we bought years and years ago, and it was just underneath the house. There was two of them actually, obviously the front and the back. Very old number plate. I don't know who owned this car, but I thought they were really cool. So I think that can go in here somewhere. I want some things to reflect light around, bounce the light around, so I think that might work somewhere. And also, I think I might use these boxes again. So this box has all my seeds in it, so it would be quite handy to have in this room anyway. Um, little sparkly Christmas lights. I'm just thinking I might put this sort of little sparkly lights in here just to add a bit of interest. Yeah, that's an idea. I think this might be useful. This is the book that um, I keep my observations in. So when I'm doing things in the garden, I write down what's flowering or the problems I've got or that type of thing. So yeah, that could be useful in here. Matching books just to go with it. I think we're getting somewhere. 
I'll have a little play around with it and I'll, I'll bring you back once I've got the arrangement sort of the way I want it. I found these uh, little stick-on hooks from when we were staying in a rental place and, uh, and you couldn't make holes in the walls and they just pull off so they don't make a mark. So I think I'll use these because I have them and that will save me actually making holes in the architrave. And then I've got these uh, little bulldog clips which I think, yeah, I think they'll hold onto the fabric quite securely. This is a throw. This is really useful because what I've discovered is that it doesn't crease and it's thick enough that it falls and hides a multitude of sins. So when I take it down and shove it under my sewing table, it doesn't all get creased up. I did experiment with using, I've got a whole bunch of fabric up there. When I hung it at the door, I realized that I would have to iron it. The ironing could be a bit of a barrier there. <laughs> okay. I'll try framing the shot exactly how I'm thinking of doing it now and see how that would work. But I think, I think we're good. Okay, so I'm sort of thinking a bit like that. I'll look at it back on the computer. I think that's a bit more interesting. I wanted to, actually, I want to just try and get this fabric out of the top here. I'm on my sewing chair and it go, it's, a, it's an adjustable height. It goes up and down. So I just need to work out that angle exactly. But yeah, I think that's not bad. Maybe a little bit of, uh, if I get a little light in here, that's, I think that might brighten things up. Or maybe, maybe I could put the light there. Oh, that might work. I found a little Christmas light, so I'm going to try that and see if it looks good. This could take a while. <laughs> I'll get back to you once it's plugged in. This tripod uh, for quite a while. We, I took this when we went when we were cycle touring in Europe. So I had another. Uh, I have another channel called Cyclopolitans where I recorded our travels around Europe on bicycles. We did that for two two years. So this was the tripod that I took with me then. So I'm um, bringing it back into action and I'm going to use it with the new camera. And this is. The microphone and it does fit on this camera which is really exciting so I'm going to try it all out and see if it works. Well hello everyone and welcome to Cornwall Pocket Farm where I try and figure out how to live sustainably on 300 square meters in the city. So what I've been trying to do here is as I said at the beginning set up a little YouTube studio and up my game with the camera equipment which hopefully you're listening to now so you'll be able to see if it's any better um, and the other thing of course I was trying to do was do all this as sustainably as possible this is very much part of what I do which is why I brought you along on this journey so whenever I want to do something new I go through a whole thought process of how could I do this sustainably I still want to be able to do it but I want to do it with a lower impact essentially on the planet. So how do I do that? Well I thought about setting up the YouTube studio and upgrading my equipment and I thought well I could rush out and buy a whole lot of brand new stuff. I've, I've done quite a lot of research on YouTube about how people set up these little micro studios and it does usually involve people rushing out and buying heaps of stuff and coming back and getting everything together. And I thought, well, well, no, obviously the more sustainable thing to do is to use second-hand things or, more sustainable than that, using things you already own. So I shopped my house, as my daughters would say, and I went round and I found all the bits and pieces that I thought might um, look good in the space and do the job. And then, of course, I've got the camera, which I bought second-hand. So by having things, by using things that you already own or buying second-hand materials, you're not stimulating the production of new goods. And obviously what's involved in those, uh, that production is all of the transport costs, all of the raw materials, the mining, the uh, production, the energy of the production. There's so many impacts that go into the creation of new materials. And also... If people then have things they don't want and it goes to waste, you've then created rubbish. 
the way I look at it is that if I can use second-hand goods, I'm reducing that flow to waste and I'm also not stimulating the production of new goods. So the camera was um, second-hand, which was great, and it seems like a really nice little camera. The tripod I already owned, the microphone I already owned. Um, I bought this throw from a charity shop, so that was for $5. And all of the other bits and pieces I have are things that I already own, even my, my Christmas lights, <laughs> which uh, I think look quite pretty. Um, obviously, when I do these videos, I'll turn them on, but they're LED lights, so they're pretty low energy as well. But the whole idea is, could I do this in a sustainable way? And, you know, I'm not perfect. I just try and figure it out the best I can. And looking at all the impacts that this could have had, I was thinking that the biggest impact would be if I'd rushed out and bought a whole load of new stuff to make this happen. I'm really pleased with my little setup. And, uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed coming along with me on this journey. If you like what I'm doing, these, this sort of content, then please check out my other videos and maybe subscribe. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be great. I will need to play with this camera quite a bit more <laughs> uh, to figure out all the settings and how it all works. So I'll do a little bit of playing with that, but I won't bore you and bring you along for that. I just wanted to show you how I was setting all of this up. So anyway, bye for now, everybody, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>